What's up, YouTube? Knife Crazy here. I have a unboxing, which I don't very rarely do this because I usually can never wait. And I literally got this in the mail probably less than an hour ago. And I've been biting at the bullet to try to get the, get the camera out, get everything set up to get this video made because I want to open this up. Anyway, obviously, you know by the title, this is the new ZT um, uh, 0308. 0308, whatever you want to call it. All right, so this was purchased, USA made blade. This is obviously a USA made knife. Um, so I'm gonna do the little first impressions type video of it. So let's open it up. And it's just fitting that I'm gonna open it up with USA made blades exclusive hinderer half track. Warren Cliff, two tone, full tie. Whew. Look at that steel flame. All right, anyway, folks. All right, enough joking aside. Let's get this open up. Be real careful here. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to cut into the ZT box or anything. In case it's all the way in the corner there or something. Let's see. Oh, no good. Peanuts. Let's put the hinder half track up. Let's see, we got tactical peanuts. Gotta love them tactical peanuts. All right, ooh, I see something different already. I don't have, I've not had many ZTs in my life, but this one looks different. I've never seen, mate. I mean, y'all tell me if I'm wrong. Is this, is this something new to this knife this year? Like, I've never seen a white box. Uh, with blue writing. So I've only seen the, what's that, blue or black ZT boxes. Hmm, that's different. Any more goodies in there? Nope. All right, let's put the tactical peanuts back in. We can use those in case the world starts coming to an end or something. We can use them. Those come in handy. All right, so like I said, USA made blade. Never heard of them. I don't know why you haven't. You apparently never watched my channel. Uh, most of my knives come from USA Made Blade. I'm a hinderer nut. I'm a USA knife nut. So that's where you need to be buying your knives. <laughs> now, if it's not a USA knife and you have to have it, then you have to go elsewhere. All right, let's dig in. Let's, well, first, let me, let me slow it down a little bit for you. That's the end of it. It's your information. I've been waiting to get home all day to get this open. What is this in here? Some little packet. Ooh, look at there, extra clip screws. How about that? That's awesome. That's a nice touch. Never seen that in a ZT box before. Normal paperwork. All right, put the box away. Plastic. All right. Let's pull out the titanium side first. Get this salt and pepper pack out the way. I'll use that on my salad later. All right. There's your tie side. Keep in mind, folks, I'm going to be looking at this. I might have to go off camera a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at this closely, just like y'all are for the first time. Man, that, uh, that mill work, that's, that's pretty awesome looking. That is nice. That took some milling there. That kind of, I don't know, call it standard ZT clip that I see on a lot of them. Um, and what's good about it is that three, I think a lot of the bench made clips, the, the, the three clips, I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think Spyderco clips can fit on that. Maybe Emerson, stuff like that, uh, bench made clips, that's probably what fits on here. Anyway, let's see. There is three nice uh, standoffs. Big pivot. That's that pivot that takes a half inch wrench and you can take it apart. Let's see this side. Same mill work, but on G10. Not aggressive this way. More aggressive side to side, obviously, because the te way the texturing is but still you can feel it. Look at centering. 
dead on. Nice. I like that flipper tab, how it's got a little cutout in it. This was one thing I was worried about. It looks like a, which it is, this is no little knife. We're gonna see some size comparison here in a minute. At a uh, three and three quarter inch blade, I was worried about this flipper tab being a little too small. So let's give it, go ahead and give it a shot, guys. All right, five and a half minutes in, let's open up this knife. Ooh. Oh yeah. That is a fat blade. <laughs> let's see, what was the serial number? Ooh, that's a very low serial number. 108. USA CPM 20 CV. Ooh. Feel sharp, let's see. Oh yeah, shaves hair. There's a hair on the knife in case you can't see it. Got this big swedge up here on it. Kinda, kinda almost needed. It's such a wide, wide uh, blade here that Kind of without that, can you just imagine if that was just kind of straight and bland, I guess you would say, kind of, it would just be so huge looking. That kind of takes away from how wide it really is looks, you know? Very thick tip right here. That'd be good for piercing. You don't have to worry breaking a tip. Let's see how it feels in hand. Wow, look at that. Let's see if I can get it in camera. I wear extra large hands. It is perfect in hand. That grip, look at that. That has no, no hot spots that I can feel. It is smooth right here, choking up right where your thumb is. Is that jumping? Let's see. You can hear it. It is, it is not crazy aggressive, but obviously you can kind of feel that it's there. It's useful. Let's see, lock up with that lock bar insert. Double screws there, and just in case, I guess, one came loose, you ain't worried about. I mean, it, guys, if you if you were into big, way overbuilt folders, you got to get this. <laughs> I mean, this is massive. I won't be too crazy with it. But let's do some size comparison real quick, all right? Let's throw out my... Uh, you know, I, I got, let's see, got a Strider SNG. Let's put it right here. All right, so blade is similar length, but then you can still really tell the thickness of a blade. All right, so that's a Strider size comparison. Let's, uh, what's else here? So Benza 21, let's pull that out, see what that looks like. All right, big difference in, in thickness. All right, so you can really tell. All right, so blade length is real close to the same length, but so much fatter everywhere this way. All right, handle, blade, everything, that much bigger. Got it by probably not quite a half inch or so on total length, it looks like. And let's pull out a Hender XM18. And all three of the knives I just did for comparison, they're all pretty much the same exact length. So they're, these are the normal three and a half, 3.6 uh, range knives. This is a good bit larger. All right, so there you go. If you're familiar with either one of those three, what I would consider a three and a half, 3.6, kind of a, what they call the large Sabenza. I mean, that's their large knife. It still got it beat by some. Oh, right, let, let's shoot, might as well. Let's see. <laughs> Big difference. All right, just for fun, you know. So, let's see the smoothness. This would be the first time I've closed it. 
Nice. Ooh, that makes a good sound. I'm sure we're probably using it, opening and closing a little more, kind of get it a little more broke in, but just a little, a little shake. One good little shake and it'll, it'll close on its own. There you go. That flipper tab I was worrying about being a little small for such a big knife, forget that. That is definitely not the case. The jimping right here on the front of that flipper tab, that's where it's at right there, buddy. It is angled. It is angled back so it does not hurt your finger. No point there. And it just, I'm pulling and it's no, it does not want to slip off, okay? It just wants to grab into it and pull back. <laughs> Can y'all hear? Turn up your sound if it ain't no sound. Now listen to this. It's got a schwack. The uh, clip looks to be got enough little ramp there. Let's see. It don't. It don't have a whole lot of ramp. That one right there is my hand. I'm sure it's probably good in and out of the pocket. If not, you can find a clip out there with the standard kind of bolt pattern, you know, screw pattern. It is definitely reversible. Left or right hand carry, so that's good. Got a lanyard hole, not a tube, so two holes on both sides. And the, I've watched a few videos about this knife from uh, SHOT Show is where they kind of brought it out and announced it. And the ZT Kershaw guy from the company's mouth said that this hole, okay, that goes all the way through, is just for looks. So don't try to make it anything else. Um, you could, I mean, I think if they put that there to say, okay, you can have access to the the bearings here for putting oil in it easier, which let's see, um, I don't know, maybe that that's definitely the case because it's definitely closer to the bearings than it is anywhere else. Yeah, that might would help. Um, that it's used for anything in particular, but it's not. That is just a aesthetic that they put there thinking that it would look cool or whatever you want to call it. The designer decided that's what he wanted there. Um, do I see anything wrong with that? Nah. I mean, I would think uh, probably 95% of the world is using their knives nowadays is in a situation where you probably ain't in the jungles or anything like that. Now, if you are, if your knife is constantly dropped in a rocky stream or out in the jungle and there's sticks all around and trash and garbage and you're throwing it on the ground, all that kind of stuff, then I could see that one in a million chance that a piece of stick or a piece of pebble or a rock or a bunch of glob of mud or something, if you dropped it in the mud and it smashed down into that uh, hole, eh, maybe then when you go to close it, it's gonna go, it's gonna smash into it. You see the flipper tab right there, see? But other than that, I mean, really, all the knives that I've handled um, is literally for having it in a case I need it, open and closing, I uh, ain't open and closing, open and packages, simple stuff around the house. When you're out and about, you need a knife for cutting food, whatever that would never be an issue at all. It's that one in a million chance, that 1% out of 100 that is using this, honestly, using this the way it could be used for, beating the crap out of it and it taking it is uh, the way I'm seeing this knife could be used for. It's big and whew, massive of a hunk of a knife. Um, 
if you did drop it in a mud and a stream that had little small pebbles and rocks or something and it got clogged in that hole for some reason there's you, you got a bunch of sticks around and one little stick decided a little broken piece of hunk of stick decided it wanted to get in that hole and you went to close it i could see that could be a problem all right but other than that you know it would never cause me a problem i mean I, i'm just going at it with that you know a, a reviewer can review something only based off of his normal experience and my normal experience is having kind of maybe lots of safe queens a couple users here and there um if i'm gonna beat the crap out of a knife i'm probably gonna go get a fixed blade anyway if i'm gonna be out in the wilderness and batoning and whatever <clears throat> then i'm not gonna worry about having a <clears throat> a ball bearing uh flipper knife anyway okay uh, that's that's all i'm saying if you need a knife that hard to use then go get something that's it's meant to be used for but that's about i mean i'm about 16 minutes in of an unboxing first impression review all in one um easy to close has a knife chamfer here um, you get your finger in there nice, smooth, drop shut. Man, it opens good. It don't have a, I don't, it's definitely not a sharpening choil, but they've come, tapered it back enough so you're not going to have, maybe after you sharpen it 10 times, you might start getting up into that little curved area right there that would might cause it to start, the edge start to, look a little funny or a little larger than the rest of the knife, I guess you would say, you know, but I really like this, uh, the millwork. That is cool looking. Just trying to show it off close as I can for you. That's going to look good with some, uh, anodizing work. I know all the custom anodizers and even USMA blade, I believe I just saw yesterday or over the weekend, he's already anodized some of the uh, Stars and Stripes on it. And the, the anodizing world is going to go crazy anodizing this titanium. I can tell you that. It's gonna, there's lots of stuff. You can do all kind of colors and stuff. It's going to look good. And if you don't like Coyote, Tan, FDE, whatever, um... I can just about guarantee you there's going to be custom scale makers coming out the woodworks now. Give you whatever color you want in micarta or carbon fiber. But anyway, that's about it. Try to keep it under 20 minutes. And this is my first impression, unboxing, review all at one time. Got it all covered. And, uh... Down below in the description down below, I'll put a link to it at USMA Blade where you can go get you one. If you like this, what you see, go get it. Uh, Scott Whittington, USMA Blade, great guy to deal with, great customer service. Shipped out same day they got them in. I mean, fast shipping. You know, you want something, you'll get it quick. <clears throat> All right. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.